Yes, we are back to our session of Book of Judges. Did you remember yesterday's topic or yesterday's judge? Shemgar. Amen. Hallelujah. I think you didn't wrote, uh, did you wrote this Yehud's name on the, your table? Name is Ehud. Please kindly fill it up if you not anyone. You can open your page. You have left one page for the table of writing all the 12 judges names with the tribe names, with their father's names. If you didn't write, you can just write it down. Ehud's name. Judge name is Ehud. His father's name is Gera. You know the Ehud's name meaning and Gera's meaning. Ehud's name meaning is praise. Gera's name meaning is meditation. Yes. They were under 18 years under the Eglon. Amen. They suffered for 18 years. How many years of suffering means? You can write it down as 18 years. On the days of Othniel, the suffering time, eight years. In Ehud, 18 years. How many years did they got the peace? 80 years. Who are the enemies? Moab. And the king name is Eglon. And the first judge who is the enemy means Mesopotamia. His, the king name is Kusandri Satayim. Hallelujah. And he belongs to the tribe of Benjamite. Second judge, don't get confused, Othniel is from the tribe of Judah, Ehud is from the tribe of Benjamin, Amen. And yesterday we have seen the third judge, Shamgar, Shamgar, you can write it down his name also, Shamgar. His father's name is Anath, Anath. I am going to say their names, meanings also, but first initially you can write their names on the table. Our third judge name is Shemgar. His father's name is Anath. How many years of suffering means it is not mentioned. How many years they got the peace, it is also not mentioned. But who are the enemies? It is has been mentioned as Philistines. You can just write it down. And the tribe also not mentioned. From which tribe he was, it is not mentioned. If we have a one chapter of this Shemga, we can just identify from which uh, tribe he was. Are you getting me? If it, the tribe is also not mentioned from the scriptures, from the basis, from his culture, from his livelihood, we can just uh, assume from which tribe he was. But from coming to the Shemga, it was only mentioned a single verse. Amen? And we cannot see this Shemga's name again in whole Bible. This is the only time saying about the third judge, Shemgar. Yesterday we have seen Shemgar was carrying a weapon. It's not a weapon, we can just call it as a tool. Are you getting me? Shemgar was not carrying a weapon, he was just carrying an ox god. And the ox god is used for the farming. From this sentence we can say he was a farmer. Amen. He was not belongs to a rich community. He was not a rich pan. He does not belong to a very uh, populated or famed person. He was just a normal farmer. He was doing his farming in his agricultural land. And suddenly one day, 600 Philistines were tried to attack and capture the Israels. But the Shemgar carrying his ox god killed 600 of the Philistines. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How he has killed with a normal ox god, how he killed professional warriors means we have seen. He didn't put his faith on him. He didn't put his faith on his weapon. He didn't put his faith on his relatives, friends, on his ox god. But he put his faith on his god. 
Amen. So Let that's how. To the Lord. So that's how he killed 600 of Philistines, and we have seen what the God wants from us. Is it a belief or a faith? Are you getting me? Amen. Faith means trusting to the God completely. We have seen yesterday three people, Abel, Shamgar, and a widow from Zarapath. Amen. These three people we have seen, and we have seen one more person also, a small child. He was giving five loaves and two fishes. Amen. So they trusted their God completely. They never looked back. Amen. They never asked anything. They just put their complete trust in the God. So they have seen miracles on that time. Amen. The widow has put his faith on the prophet. Abel has put the faith on the God. Hallelujah. We have seen the faith and the difference between the faith and the belief. Belief is, means just agreeing to the truth. Belief means agreeing to the truth. Yes, it is. This is a pen. Yeah, it is a pen. If I go to the America, if I go to the Australia, if I go to India, this is we call as pen. Are you getting me? By seeing it, it is a truth. We can just say belief. But trusting is totally different. Faith means totally different. We have seen a faithful man in the book of Hebrews on the chapter 11. Father of faith, Abraham. He didn't ask God where he was going. He didn't know where he was also going. He trusted the God very, very much. Hallelujah. Why? Because he don't know when the God manifests to Abraham. If the God appears to Abraham this day, he don't know when he will appear again. It may be a month. It may be a two months. It may be a one year. Are you getting me? It may be a five years also. He has to walk like that only. If suddenly God appears and says, go to the left, he has to go to the left like that only. For months, for months, for years. After the appearance of the God, just he will stop. Up to that time, he never asked a single question. He never doubted the God. And that is we call as faith, trusting the God completely. Hallelujah. Can we read that verse once again? The book of Judges, chapter 3, and the verse 31. The book of Judges, chapter 3, verse 31. After him was Shamga, the son of Anath, who killed 600 of the Philistines with an ox god, and he also saved Israel. Yes. After him was Shamga, the son of Anath, who killed 600 of Philistines with an ox god, and he also saved Israel. Today also, we are going to discuss about Shemgar. We didn't finish Shemgar yesterday. We have just discussed only few things about that Shemgar. Today also, we are going to discuss about the Shemgar, even if it is a single verse. Are you getting me? On the first day, I said, even if it is a single one of you, even if you are a 2,000 or 10,000 members, we are going to preach, we are going to teach the subjects. Are you getting me? Hallelujah. So even if it is a one chapter of judge, even if it is a single verse of the judge, we are not going to leave them. We are going to get some information among their lives, among some verses. So come and take this Shamgar. We have seen his faith yesterday. Hallelujah. Now we are going to learn three things from the Shamgar. Yesterday I have mentioned we have learned three things from the Aksa. Asking thanksgiving, obedience. In the same way, we are going to learn three things from the Shemgar's life. The first thing is, we can just say faith also, but it is not. Uh, it is faith is out of this. Uh, we, are, we are just discussing about some remaining topics. If you want, you can write as a faith like that. It is in separate heading, but we are discussing about three more things. The first thing we have discussed uh, in Shamgar's life is faith. Are you getting me? Hallelujah. Now we are going to see some things. Start immediately where you are. What it resembles about the Shamgar's life? Yes. We are just discussing about the Shamgar's life. 
from the Shamgar's life, we are going to in depth. The first thing we can see from his life is start immediately where you are. What the Shamgar's did? Okay. Shamgar was in the agriculture field. Are you getting me? He was in a farm's land. He was in a farming land. He was just doing the agriculture. Suddenly, the enemies were approached him. Suddenly, enemies were tried to attack him. From this verse, we can see he never went back to the, his community. He never went back to his relatives. He never went back to his house to carry some weapons or to carry some things or to call someone else. Are you getting me? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Shemgar didn't went to his home. Shemgar didn't went to call his friends. Shemgar didn't went to carry a good weapon. He just started where he was. He just started where he was. From the Shemgar's life, we can learn, start immediately where you are. How it can apply to our lives means, yes. Someone says, to preach the gospel, I need my friends. For preaching of gospel, we might ask few things. Are you getting me? For preaching of salvation, for preaching of this gospel, for preaching of these scriptures, we might say some excuses. We might say, oh, give me one day time. Give me two days time. I will go to my home. I will just re-go through the scriptures. I will just call our friends. Uh, alone, uh, alone, uh, I cannot preach the gospel. I will accompany with someone. We say some excuses. Are you getting me? If you are saying the excuses, we cannot preach the gospel. We cannot preach the gospel to others. It has to come from our hearts. The gospel has to burn in our souls. Are you getting me? Shemgar's life we have seen, he has started where he was. He never looked for a good weapon. He knows ox god was not a good weapon. He knows he was not carrying a shield. He knows he was not carrying a spear and the sword. But even he started where he was. He knows their friends and relatives was not with them. He knows his parents was not with them. He knows he was not prepared for that. But even though he started where he was and the God took over it. Let us clap for the professor. If you are afraid of ourselves, we cannot see the miracles of the God. We have to step a first step for the Christ. And he will walk for ourselves. Are you getting me? The first step has to take by ourselves. And the remaining steps, he will walk. We have to dare to it. We have to dare. We have to dare for the Christ. We have to dare to preach the gospel. We should not never ever ashamed of the gospel. We should not say some excuses of preaching the gospel, of doing the God's things. Amen. And the second thing we can see, use what you have. Yeah, it is on also an excuse. We say, I cannot sing, I cannot preach, my voice is not so good, I am not belong to a very good community, I am not very talented. No, 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 no. Are you getting me? For God things, for preaching the gospel, you don't need anything. You just need what you have. Shemgar was having an ox god. He just used the ox god. If we had a weapon, sword, he, he might use it. If we had a spear, he might use that. 
Are you getting me? If he had a shield, he might use it. But he was having ox god, even though he used the ox god for the god's work. Third thing we can see from the Shemgar, do what you can. The third thing from we can see from the Shemgar's life is, do what you can. If you have a talent of singing, you can use that talent for the God. Are you getting me? If you have a talent of preaching, you can use that talent for the God. If you know how to drive, you can use that talent for the God, for the ministry. If you know how to key, play keyboard, you can use that key talent for the God. Are you getting me? But we should not say excuses that I don't have talent of that man. I don't have talent of this man. I don't have talent of this man. No, 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 no. We can use what we had and do what we can. Second point is different. Third point is different. Are you getting me? First point is start immediately where you are. We should not say tomorrow I will. As our professor John Bobby said, our, some drunkards, what they say is, they will take some decisions and say tomorrow I will. Tomorrow I will. Tomorrow will be tomorrow. Are you getting me? If you want to do something for the God, start immediately where you are. Not tomorrow, not day after tomorrow. Today itself, it is the time. What our Christians believe is, what the most they neglect is, they thought we have a very long time. Are you getting me? What the greatest negligence in the Christian's life is, they think we have a lot of time. They think rapture is, oh, after many years. They think they will get the salvation after many years. No, 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 no. Are you getting me? It is the most negligence in the Christian's life. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Prepare now itself. What if the God comes today? There is no tomorrow. Are you getting me? So from the Shamgar's life, we can see, start immediately where you are. If we want to work for the Christ, if we want to do something for the Christ, we have to start right away. Not tomorrow, not day after tomorrow. He never said to Philistines, hey, stay, 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 Philistines. I will just go back to my home. I will just carry some weapons and I will be back within 5-10 minutes. Or I will, we will just uh, uh, do the war on the next day. He never said. He just started where he was. On the right time. And the second thing is, wa use what you have. He was carrying an axe god. He just used it. You and me have a separate talents. My talent is different than yours. Your talent is different than mine's. But anyway, we can use our talents for the Christ. Every talent can be used for the Christ. Let us clap to the Lord. The, use what you have. So we should not say excuses that he has that talent. If I had that talent, I would use for the cross. Are you getting me? This is also an excuse. We say that person had a special talent. So he was using that talent for the Christ. If I had the same talent, I would use it for the Christ. No, no, no. You two have a sub separate talent. We can use it for the Christ. We should not jealous about other talents. They got from the God. The God blessed them. Are you getting me? Do what you can. If you are a keyboard, if you are anything, if you are something, something else, we can use every field for the God. To understand this better way, we will just go to the scriptures. Gospel of Matthew chapter 25 from verse 14. Gospel of Matthew chapter 25 from verse 14. Gospel of Matthew chapter 25 verse 14. The parable of the talents. 14. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and trusted to them his property. Verse 15. To one he gave five talents, to another two, 
to another one, to each according to, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Verse 16. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. 17. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. 18. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. 19. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Verse 20. And to he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. Yes, thank you, thank you, Bishop. We can know this parable. Hallelujah. One is was a fee One is was a fee We have known this parable. This was the parable the our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is saying about. Here we can see three persons. Amen. One was having five talents. Hallelujah. One more was having two talents and one more having one talent and in the verse 15 it mentioned everyone got their talents according to their capability can we read that verse once again Bishop Lenet from the gospel of Matthew chapter 25 in the verse 15 verse 15 to one he gave five talents to another two to another one to each according to his ability then he went away. Yes. Before going to his journey, he gave some talents to three people. It's depending upon their ability. Amen. And in this verse, we can see these three people who were not complaining about others. Hey, why you got five talents? I got only two talents. They never complained. They just went away to do their work. Are you getting me? These three people never never went to the quarrel. Why you went? Why you got five? Why you got two? I only got one. The three people went right away to use their talents. Amen. And we can see here the five talents who got. He had went and traded and got five more talents, and the one who got the two talents. He went and he traded and he, he got two more talents. But the one man who got only one talent, he just went and dig some soil and he buried that talent. Are you getting me? He never used or he never traded with the talent. He just kept it as a secret. Yes, in some Christian lives, I don't know about in Kenya, in India majorly, I have seen many members, they don't want to tell their talent to others. Why? Because you know, if they tell their talent in the church, the pastor will use that talent. You are not getting. You are getting. If there is a keyboard, there is, if there is no person, if the keyboard is it right there, but there are some people who knows the keyboard. Who knows how to play the keyboard? But what they will do is, they don't say that he knows the keyboard. He don't say that he was a musician. Why? Because if he says to the pastor, the pastor might use him. Yeah. This is the same man who did. He had got a talent and he went right away and dig a sign and he buried it. He kept it secret. What is the use of that? And we can see what happened to that man. On the verse 24. Verse 24. He also, who had received the one talent, came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. 25, 
So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. You have what is yours. Yes, verse 26 also, Bishop. Verse 26. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that, you knew that I reap where I have not sown, and gathered where I scattered, I scattered no seed. 27. Then you ought to have invested the money with the bankers, and at my coming, I should have received what was my own with interest. Verse 30. Directly we can read the verse 30. Verse 30. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Generally, what is the toughest job among these three people means? The one who had five talents is a very tough job. Are you getting me? He had five talents. So now what he has to do, he has to gain more five talents. It is a bit tough. Are you getting me? But for this one talent man who had only one talent, it is a pretty easy one. It is a pretty easy to gain one more talent. But the man who had the five talents, it is very hard to gain five more talents. But the one who is very tough, what is very tough, he did it. But the man who is very easy to gain one more talent, he just hid his talent. And we can see on the verse something worse. After a very long time, the owner has, the master has arrived. On the verse 19. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. What does this parable says about thing means? It says about our talents. And who is the master? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the master. Amen. He gave each and every one of us a special talent. Are you getting me? But we can assume there are three people. One has five, one has two, one has one. Are you getting me? But do you see a person who doesn't have any talent? No. For each person, at least one talent has been given. For each person, at least one talent has been given. There is no person that does not have a single talent. Three persons. But at least they have got one. You and me also have talents. But the question is, are we using for the Christ? Are we using for this ministry? Are we hiding the, our talents in the ground? Or we are we using our talents for the Christ? But on one day, on the verse 19 says, after a very long time, the master has came and asked each one of them whether you have used your talent or not. But the one who hid his talent on the ground has sent into the darkness. Praying is also a talent. Yes, we can pray for the perishing souls. Are you getting me? We may complain, Oh God, I may not have a good voice. I cannot sing. I cannot do things like that. We have plenty of works in this ministry that we can use. Hallelujah. We have to be in this part of ministry. Every one of you. So, from coming this to these talents, we can see, start immediately where you are. We should not complain about other talents. We should not complain about the leadership also. As I said, I mentioned earlier, our leaders are being appointed by the God. Hallelujah. We should not ever, ever complain about the leadership. If a particular work has been assigned to us, Start immediately where we are. We should not say some excuses that I need this thing, that I need this thing, that I need that thing. No. If you want to go to the preach the gospel, you should not depend on friends and relatives. You should not depend on any tools or anything like that. We can just start over where we are. Because if we start, the God will take over it. Let us clap for the professor.
Yes, really, if we go and preach the gospel, many people won't believe. Are you getting me? We don't have such strength. We don't have that talkativeness. Are you getting me? But the God will help. But the first step we have to do is, we have to take the first step. We have to take the first step and the remaining steps, he will walk. Let us clap for the professor, Makofi Makubwa, Nabigele Gele. There are three, four steps to coming to this altar. If I am afraid, oh, there are four steps, how can I? But if I take the first step of this step, the God will carry me and bring me up to this altar. Yes, for preaching of gospel, for preaching of anything, you don't need anything. You just have to trust in the God. We have to put our faith in the God. And we have to take our first initial step. And the God will take over it. Hallelujah. And use what you have, do what you can. Use what you have and do what you can. These things have been seen in the life of Shamgar. He did just, he just started away where he was. He just did what he had and what he can. Hallelujah. And there are few things also we can just learn from the Shemgas life. Shemgas meaning, the name meaning, travel or our pilgrim is a just similar word, but the, it has a different meaning also, stranger. Pilgrim, traveler or stranger. And Anath, Anath's meaning is answer. Anath, who is Anath? Shemgar's father. We can say, what is the answer to the Anath means, Shemgar is the answer. Are you getting me? I might think Anath was praying for many years or for many days for the deliverance. Anath's name meaning is answer. Yes, he got the answer and the answer is his own son, Shemgar. He delivered the Israels and he appointed as a third judge to the Israels. Now we are going to the Shemgar's meaning. Shemgar's name meaning is pilgrim or a traveler. Shemgar's life, from the Shemgar's life we have seen the faith and start immediately what, where you are, use what you can, do what you can. And we are going to see, he's mentioning that we are a travelers. We are a pilgrims to this earth. Are you getting me? Yes, I was a traveler from India to Kenya. I might stay for one week, two weeks, for one month, for two, two months. But on one day, I'm going to back to my India. Why? It is not my native town. I came from one place. I'm going to return to that place once again. Are you getting me? Hallelujah. In the same way, Shemga wants to tell to us that we are travelers. We are pilgrims. If I have a something work to do on, on Kenya, sorry, on Nairobi, for example, I have to give this pen to someone on Nairobi. Are you getting me? I was in this Nakuru. So I, I have got a job so that I have to give this pen to someone who is in Nairobi. I went to Nairobi. I talked to him. I greeted him. How are you? How is your life? I am asked everything. But I came back without giving to this. Are you getting me? What is the reason I went to there? Why I went to Nairobi first initially? To give this pen. But I went there. I greeted him. I talked to him. I spent the time, so much of time there. But I never gave this pen to that person, but I returned to my place. Can we say 
my job is fulfilled in the same way we are a travelers to this earth we came to this earth to praise the jesus we came to this earth for the thanksgiving but on one day we are going back salvation is a very basic part we have gone very far from the salvation now we are preparing from the glorious coming of the messiah are you getting me but are we doing our job are we giving thanks giving to the god are we giving praise to the god we came to this earth for this thing if you are not doing this it means our work is not completed we are just traveling but we are not doing the work i just went and came back but i didn't do my work travelers what they will do is they will go for the reason and they will come back it might be a business job it might be a job it might be a, like a picnic or something if i go for a picnic to the europe or something i go to the europe on the second day if i comes back what is the use of it every traveler had a reason to travel are you getting my point every pilgrim had a reason for his journey every traveler had a particular reason to do traveling it might be any job yes indeed we too have a particular job in this earth we have to complete our job in this earth and we have to go back to our towns amen hallelujah Psalms 120 I think I have said this uh, Psalms from 120 to 134 these 15 Psalms 120 to 134 these songs are these Psalms can you see the title over there what was mentioned is bishop sams 120 above the verse we can see song of ascents what is the meaning of ascents what is the meaning of ascents what is it mean means ascents means just like a travelers are you getting me there are some psalms in the book of psalms it is mentioned for something as we do uh, as we do in our christians life there are some songs mentioned especially for the thanksgiving for birthdays for burial for marriage are you getting me in the same way the israels had also have some songs which are used only on the traveling for every year they come three times on every year they will come three times to the jerusalem temple hallelujah on the way they will sing these songs from 120 to 124 that's why it was mentioned as song of ascents how many are there how many are there 15 we have to count 120 also 120 will be 1 121 will be 2 are you getting me from 120 to 134 there are 15 sam why there are only 15 sams and what does this 15 sams says about and uh, i would like to explain this sams because it is very related to our subject shamgar each sam starts with an hebrew word each sam starts with an hebrew word <laughs> i think hebrew subject is not yet completed <laughs> amen i am not writing in hebrew we don't have that much time we i am just writing it down in the english you can just speak if you are going to speak this shir ha malot you can just write it in hebrew also are you getting me yeah each sam i have just only wrote to each sam from 120 to 
every sam starts with a letter sirla and the main thing we can see is maloth on the first verse it starts with the verse word maloth what is the meaning of maloth maloth means going up going up i will just write it down going up each sam starts with a letter maloth sirha maloth in 121 sirla maloth like that every sam has a word but we can see a repeating word in these sams from 120 to 124 not from 1 to 150 are you getting me we are just discussing about the song of essence that is from 120 to 134 these are 15 sams on this 15 sams we can see a word repeating maloth on the first initially maloth means going up what the authors of the psalms wants to say is yes you are traveling you are traveling i said on the earlier jerusalem was situated on the very high place if they want to come to the temple they have to climb up and why it is only 15 psalms means vincent can you display it on the screen for the temple, they have 15 steps. To go into the temple, they have 15 steps. So going into the temple, they resembled 15 psalms for that. Because for each and everything, they have reasons. Are you getting me? We have to know the reasons. Why it was only mentioned about only 15 psalms? Why not 16? Why not 14 means? Yes. Why only 15 means? They have these are the 15 steps that leads to the temple. 15 steps. Okay. These are the 15 steps that these are the 15 steps to the temple. After coming to the one step, they will song the first song of exercise. That is 120. After climbing to one more step, they will sing one more. After climbing into th the third step, they will sing one more. Are you getting me? Yes, like that. They all uniformly stand in a single step. After singing one song, they will just climb to one more step and one more step, one more step, like that. For 15 steps, they have 15 songs. Okay. Coming to the point, what is this 15 songs tells about means? 122, Psalm 122, verse 3 and 4. Psalm 122, 3 and 4. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together, verse 4, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Yes, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. What is the main intention of these 15 songs means? It says about that we are travelers. Are you getting me? And every song, every psalm starts with a maloth word that means going up. Yes, in the initial days, the Israel and the Judah people, if they want to go to the temple, they have to climb up. Amen? Now we don't have the temple, but we have eternal temple. We have an everlasting temple in the Zion. These Psalms, not only these Psalms, every verse in the Bible says that we are going to up. We are going up. We are travelers. We are just climbing step by step, step by step, step by step, step by step. And do you know, we are on the last step. We are on the last step. We are on the last days. If you see backwards, we have gotten through very many steps. The time has been passed. As I said, the main thing in the Christians is negligence of the time. They assume we have a lot of time. No, 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 no. This song of the Psalms and the Shemgar's life, everything speaks about, says about, we are travelers. 
we came to this wall for a particular purpose, but we are going to our native place on one day. That's why we can see Hebrews chapter 13 and the verse 14. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 14. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Yes, for here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is, is to come. Amen? And we are the citizens of that city. We are going to that city one day. Let us clap to the Lord. Makofi na vigelegele kwa buwana. Yes, can we read the verse 15 also, Bishop? Through him, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of the lips that acknowledge his name. Yes. So, what the word of the God says is, we are not from this city, we belong to some city that is to come, but up to that time, let us continuously offer our sacrifice of praise of God that is the fruit of the lips. Amen. As I said, we came to this earth for a reason that is praising the God, thanksgiving and preparing ourselves. Hallelujah. Preparing ourselves at the same time, praising the Almighty God. Thanksgiving the Almighty God. Up to the rapture comes. This is the duty of the, our each and every one of us. We came to this world as a traveler. If we are being came to this world as a traveler, yes, we have to finish our work and we have to go back to our city. Amen. Let us clap for the professor. And the God is looking for each and every one of us that this traveler is doing this work or not. He's traveling. We came to this, it, it means we traveled. But whether we are doing the work or not is the important thing. Amen? So from the Shemgar's life we have seen, the first thing we have seen is his faith. He kept his trust entirely on the God. Not on his relatives, not on his friends, not on his colleagues, not on his tribe, not on his weapon. And the second thing we have seen is start immediately where you are. Use what you have, do what you can. And the fourth, so on the fifth thing we have seen is Shemgar's life tells about that we are not the residents of this earth. We are just came as a traveler. We just came as a pilgrim. And one day we are going back to the city which is going to be built by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Uh, we will continue our remaining judges on the later days. Thank you. Sir.